there are lots of amazing creative mechanics in fighting games. In a genre that can follow such a clear-cut formula, fighting game developers need to make sure they have an interesting gameplay mechanic in order to stand out. Guilty Gear's Faultless Defense is a great example of a good fighting game mechanic because you spend meter to push the enemy away from you, but you also end up losing advantage frames. This provides a clear and in-depth choice the player must make, as in some situations, using FD will put you at a worse position than if you had just kept your meter. However, today we aren't talking about the good mechanics in fighting games. I wanted to discuss some of the failure stories across different fighting games to hopefully provide a better understanding on how to craft a unique and in-depth mechanic. The first question we need to answer is what exactly makes a mechanic bad? And while you could come up with a massive list of deriving factors, I think the easiest way to state it is that bad mechanics are one-dimensional. They only do one thing, and the one thing they do doesn't impact the gameplay in a way that provokes any sort of critical thought. It's just there. Now, I love Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. But I don't think anyone will disagree with me when I say that Grand Blue's Skybound Gauge is probably the best modern example of a crappy fighting game mechanic. Once again, the reason Grand Blue's Skybound Gauge doesn't work is because it's one dimensional. There are tons of tiny problems with this super meter that all add up, so let's take a look at what they are, one at a time. The first is how you gain meter. You get the meter by doing practically everything. Attacking, blocking, getting hit, and walking towards the enemy all build the SB Gauge. This means you don't have to think about your meter gain at all, and makes it turn into something that essentially just happens in the background. Next is your options for spending the meter, or should I say, option. You can spend the meter on a Skybound Art for 100% of the bar, or you can wait until you have 30% or less life to use it on a Super Skybound Art for more damage. Now, this doesn't sound too bad until you take into account the way you gain meter in the game. Due to it basically happening over time, chances are, by the time your meter is filled to 100% and you are in a situation where you would want to use the super, you're already below 30% life, meaning default Skybound Art barely exists at all. Third is the uniqueness of the supers. Aside from a few exceptions, both your character's Skybound and Super Skybound Arts are simply high damage reversal supers. This means that pretty much every single super in the game fills the exact same purpose, which is just to do more damage or to reverse the flow of an engagement. Fourth is the meter gain in context of the round itself. No matter what, the circumstances of you gaining access to two Skybound Arts in one round are next to nothing, and you don't get to carry your meter between rounds, meaning that if you don't land a super in a round, that is just flat out damage you didn't get to do. Finally, the super damage in Grand Blue is absurdly high. This really messes up the risk reward balance in Grand Blue and causes for extremely frustrating scenarios, such as this one where I won neutral three times in a row, gained a substantial lead, got wake up supered, and immediately lost all of the health lead and the momentum I had. So to recap, Grand Blue's meter builds by playing the game normally, offers no interesting choices for using the meter, and if you don't use the super, you put yourself on an objective disadvantage. There is nothing to be gained from saving it. What's so frustrating about this is that there are so many easy ways this could be fixed. Hell, if they simply just let you carry meter through rounds, this would fix so many of these issues. You would now have the choice to save the meter for when you need it, but the added draw of it being stronger when you were at low life, which poses a very interesting question of, should I use this at its strongest to secure the round, or should I hedge my bets and wait to use it when it's a bit worse, but in a situation I really need it? Plus, meter would gradually desync from the opponents meaning that there would be way more interesting dynamics instead of we both have meter or we both don't. Another way to fix this would be to add a way to spend less than 100% of the bar. Maybe they could add EX uniques that cost 25% skybound gauge, which would pose the question, should I use a little bit of meter to keep the tide in my favor, or should I put all my chips on black and go for the high risk, high reward scenario of landing a super for big damage, or losing all my meter for nothing? I feel like I have to say this again to stave off the Tunnel Vision Grand Blue lovers. I really do enjoy the game, and I think their implementation of EX Specials is one of the coolest and most interesting things I've seen in fighting games. I just wish that it didn't come with the caveat of having one of the worst super meters I've seen in fighting games. Another really bad fighting game mechanic is Guilty Gear Exard's Danger Time. However, instead of it being bad because it happens the same way every time with no room for thinking, it's bad because it never happens the same way and there's no way you could possibly think ahead for it. When two hitboxes interact without a hurtbox in Guilty Gear, a clash occurs. Whenever a clash occurs, there is a completely random chance for a special mode called Danger Time to occur. In Danger Time, 
All attacks gain a 20% damage boost and deal a special type of counter hit called Mortal Counter, which makes it so that every single attack has YRC slowdown after it connects and can be cancelled into anything, including dash. This means that in any scenario, Danger Time can activate and absolutely screw over some random player in a situation they had no reason to be screwed in. I remember a scenario that included Danger Time in one of my Guilty Gear matches that was super unfair. I got knocked down in the corner against an opponent in bracket, it was 1-1, final round, and I mashed shortly after wake up. Our buttons clashed, Danger Time activated, and the enemy panicked and jumped. Now is the part where it's important to mention that I am playing Axel Low. I anti-eared, did a full bomber loop combo, and killed him when he had around a 50% life lead on me and had me in the corner, just because he got unlucky with a Danger Time dice roll. If Danger Time hadn't activated, we would have been even in health, and the match would have continued on fairly. But since I landed what could only be described as a random crit in the corner, I got the free win button handed to me without thinking. It was a one-dimensional interaction. Number went burger, and I got more damage than I really should have. So far, we've discussed a mechanic that's bad because it's one-dimensional in a way that makes it turn out the same every time, and a mechanic that's bad because it's one-dimensional in a way that makes it completely unpredictable and heavily biased towards whoever gets lucky. So, how about a mechanic that's bad because it's one-dimensional in a way that completely delegitimizes the mechanic's existence? I'm talking about l canceling. Now, let me explain to you why I believe this to be pointless, because I know there's quite a few Smash fans subscribed to this channel. l canceling is a technique where after landing from an aerial, you shield and unshield very quickly after landing, which halves the landing lag from that aerial. This makes it so that some aerials are safer, and can allow certain combos to work that otherwise wouldn't have. The problem with this mechanic is that there's no real reason to not l cancel. The benefits it provides are one-dimensional in a way that there is never a reason you would want to not l cancel, leaving it to stand as a completely pointless skill check that, if removed, would allow for a faster pace and more exciting game for worse players, and allowing higher level players to think more about the match instead of a pointless execution minigame. Now, I'm sure some of you are thinking something along the lines of, Parry has no downsides, so why are you okay with parry? If you can parry everything, you should. And my simple explanation for that is that parrying puts you at a risk. To parry in most games, you need to flick forward, which means you have to stop blocking in order for the chance to reduce block stun. The way this gains extra dimensions compared to L cancelling is that it negates the enemy's frame advantage in exchange for a prediction based off of an opponent's predictable offense, while L cancelling simply negates enemy frame advantage for doing absolutely nothing wrong. Let's imagine a scenario in which parry is useful. You're fighting a soul, and he keeps using the string of K, S, H, S, Bandit Bringer. You block it a few times before realizing that he's doing the exact same thing over and over again just to keep you blocking, and so the next time he does this string, you just block the H, S, and hit him out of the air with a 6P while he's using Bandit Bringer. Now, let's picture a scenario where L cancelling is useful. You use an Air Normal, land, and L cancel, making you safe. Hey guys, Future Adventure here, and I just wanted to say that I completely forgot about one of the most important arguments for removing L cancelling, and that is hand health. Currently, in games like Super Smash Bros. Melee, the pace of the game is so fast that trying to L cancel and move all around the stage is actually hurting higher level players' hands, to the point where some of them are having to retire because of hand issues. This is a fighting game mechanic that is actively harming people, physically. And I feel like at that point, it's almost just impossible to advocate for the existence of L-canceling. Alright, future adventure out. L-canceling is so boring and one-dimensional that removing it entirely would have zero effect on competitive play, and an immensely positive effect on casual play. Lower level players can't L cancel, meaning that they don't get to experience the game at full throttle in a game series heavily centered around advanced and exhilarating movement options. In fact, I'm not the first person to think this at all. Currently, a Smash fan project titled Project Plus has added an auto L cancel option, which automatically inputs a perfect L cancel for you each time you land. There is a huge debate over whether this should be a feature or not, but I'd have to advocate for it. Those who reject the existence of auto L cancel seem to believe that its existence punishes players who spend the time to get good at L canceling, but I'd have to disagree. Experienced players are able to move their brain from a pointless skill check and into the actual match, meaning matches at a higher level will be faster, more in depth, and hyper than ever. 
I do not believe that execution checks in games are a bad thing, far from it. But L cancelling is a one-dimensional, hard skill check that actively detracts from the overall game experience simply by being an available option. And it has real-world physical consequences. Those were just a few examples of one-dimensional fighting game mechanics, but there are certainly more out there. Now, since this is absolutely going to be a controversial video, let me just say thank you to everyone who didn't have a little pissy fit and leave halfway through. And also, that I'd love to see some people have a civil discussion on what mechanics they feel are one-dimensional in the comments below. Let's not blow anyone's head off here because they think that push block is for babies or something. With that out of the way, this has been Adventure, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.